Can he still rely on Ronaldo? Can United still well, rely on Ronaldo? I, I, when they signed them, I said at the time, I think, what you have to do with Ronaldo, Juventus bought Ronaldo to be the difference in the Champions League. I said at that time, he won't be. Because Ronaldo, at 37 now, is not the same player. He's still got unbelievable qualities. He's still a very intelligent player, sees where the danger is, gets himself in the right position, whether it's standing still to receive the ball or on the move because he's anticipating things. But Ronaldo cannot play every game. I would have promised him lots of game time, but I want you here to be the man in the dressing room for me. If you, if you go back and then subsequently, before he went, the dodgy dressing room. When he went there, a few months later, he's complaining about the young boys not listening anymore, poor attitudes in the dressing room. He's there. If you're a young player, if you're a young player, who are you, who are you looking at in that dressing room and thinking, I want to be like him in 10 years' time, five years' time? That no one. With Ronaldo, you've got the ultimate ultimate professional so that, that but, was well, a, how do you how do you square that circle then when Ronaldo's playing hide and seek with himself during the summer and not making himself what? available and then going away at half time and when you say and I think we had a conversation last year at Rangers when you talked about Ronaldo uh, at the player and potentially what he may or may not do for, uh, for Manchester United and it may not be an advancement of Man United because he won't press the way other players will press but you look at it and say have that conversation with him let's go down your logic right let's have the conversation with him wheel him in and say you're not going to play very much for Man United season you're going to play oh, not very much That's, okay, you're okay. exaggerating you're going to play not every single game. We're going to have to be sparing with you and utilise you. Ronaldo is not going to sign for Man United under those terms because Ronaldo doesn't have that in his mind. And when you say he was signed for Juventus to go and win Champions League for them, that wasn't the thing he was sold by Juventus. He was sold. He's a key component of their side and that's why he went there. So if United have had a conversation with Ronaldo last year, Cristiano, here's how it's going to work. You're not going to play every single game. We're going to no, pick and choose you. He's not going to sign, Graham, is he? Simon, I, you're choosing to, to um, not... Every game, you're not going to play every. I would say to him, if I'd been the manager or selling it to him, you will get more than enough enough time on the pitch. You will be happy. But he wants to play every game, great. It, when you get to a certain age, but you can't, and that's the, that's but how that's you have to sell wants. it. But that's how you have to sell it to him. When you get to a certain Who, age, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was going to sell but, it to him. That's another discussion. But when you get to a certain age, you have to protect players. He's got the most fantastic attitude. Look at the way you know he's looked after himself when he's on the pitch. But. He, he, they needed a catalyst in the dressing room, someone that was was they were going to start to listen to. Well, are you surprised? Up. Okay, with, with the way it went last year, the, the backdrop to Ronaldo being a constant source of controversy, whether he was on the dugout just gesticulating or not performing on the pitch or rolling his eyes or having an altercation with a fan and not coming back in the preseason, not wanting to mm -hmm. be there, going off at half time and disappearing into the ether. Are you surprised by any of this? Yeah, because if you go back, they had a temporary manager, a temporary coach. <laughs> I think that's correct term mm. interim coach yeah who you know by christmas time was wanting to sell him so he felt unwanted you know ronaldo let's, let's get the things ronaldo still has something to offer can i give you one of course stat? he does you know ronaldo he got 18 premier league goals last year yeah if you do the calculation question but in, but in for bunches great question for you if you take his 18 goals out of the equation last where year where would they have where, been where did they finish 10th 14th 14th mm. Yeah, yeah, so you, how could how so you'd could, keep him, Graham? You I, have, if I, you're Ten Hag, you go out to keep him. What should have happened at the very start? You should have been Ten Hag should have been finding out about what players he has at his disposal. What what's the situation? Maybe the first question: What is the situation with Ronaldo? He can't be happy when but someone tried to love. sell him. But hold on, so Ten he should have done. He should have gone and, and he's seen got him. Repaid the way he's got repaid. He should have gone and, and sat down with him wherever he was in the world. Where there were, both of them were. Wherever in the world, get in front of them, sell the club to them. Going to, it's a different club now. The dressing room will be different. I'm going to sign better players. I'm going to be more disciplined. You would have, you? have got off your backside, uh, prostitute yourself, fly around the world no, for a player, and for done Ronaldo, that, would you? For Ronaldo, you would do. Because, listen, okay. Ronaldo can sit in anyone's company, anyone's company, whether it's Di Stefano, Pele, no, Messi, and say, look, I think I have been the best player that's ever kicked a ball. Ever. In the yeah, history of football. With some justification. And he's got an argument, if you look at his stats, right, longevity. Right. He's got an argument. Wait, 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 That's why I would have pushed the boat out, Sam, well, and I've, got, I've really gone for it. Fair enough. Because I think, and you hear me say it, I mentioned it with Lallana, yeah. you have no chance of being successful at a football club unless you've got good senior pros. He's the ultimate. He's the ultimate man to look at and think, that's the road but I want to go down. When, when he disappears into the ether during the summer and then disappears out of the I, stadium on, on, on a match day, he knows what that's going to do. What do you do with that one? Well, Ten Hag has given him a love. Ten Hag's walked through the door against... My backdrop would be get rid of him, change it, needs to change. You're, you're on the other camp. Ten Hag's done the love bit, which you've said, 
But that still ain't enough. Well, I come back to what I said 30 seconds ago. You would have flown wherever he was in the world and got in front of him and made him feel wanted. Yeah, but Graham, you, you, I know you. You'd have been livid never, as soon as it walked, if, if, um, if, if uh, Ronaldo, Ronaldo had walked out on you at half time. Yeah. No, but before that, the problem should have been solved. How do you know he didn't? How do you know well, he didn't? I do don't, that? but I assume it hasn't. Listen, go back to where, where they find themselves. He wanted, they wanted to sell them. Previous manager wanted to sell them. Then you get, you know, to the summer where we are now, a new manager comes along. I mean, you, you've got to start building bridges. He feels unwanted. We've all, we've all got an ego. We're talking about Ronaldo, the greatest, arguably the greatest player that's ever kicked a football. So it's you're not said, you're a saying, very good player. It's not a great player. It's Ronaldo. You're saying Ten Hag and United should keep him. Wayne Rooney, over the weekend, has his reservation. Said United should allow him to go. Got a number nine in who's going to be there for the next three or four years and really help them build a team that can be successful. So is it should it not be now? In Ten Hag's eyes, it's a long-term plan. Ronaldo won't be part of a long-term plan. But no, I come back to it, Jim. Football is such but a demand. Wrong. Yeah, I think so. I, I've been a manager, and a manager can only look to the next two or three games. You know, a manager. Time is not your friend when you're a manager. You know, if if Ronaldo's there, you've got a chance of scoring goals that equates to winning games of football. Without Ronaldo being there, who's your goal getter? Who's going to you know be the difference in games? I, I don't see anyone else being that man. And I just think. For having someone with that stature, with that attitude to our game, you've got to have them there. I come back to what we said earlier. I think the conversation should have been, look, I'm an enormous fan. I want you at the club. I love, I love you. I love everything about you. Make them feel wanted. I, I'm, I'm putting myself in his shoes. If I hear that the manager's trying to sell me halfway through last year, I've got the raging hump with the whole football club. With the whole football club. And I think it's about getting them back on side. Um, these talents do not come along very often. Man United are not in a position of strength where they can reject Cristiano Ronaldo at this time where they are in, so in, in, you in the program. Are that, you different? No, on that I, I do and I don't. There's the conundrum. Graham will understand as a manager that there's two things you've got to keep your eye on, which is the here and now because you may not have much of it. But also you've got to build a team that's able to compete. And I think the argument will be, Graham, that when people look at and your position that you've just made is probably the clearest one, which is United not in a position of strength. But when you look at the recruitment policies of other football clubs, you look at Liverpool signing Darwin Nunes and other players of that ilk, you look at Man City signing Erlen Harwood, and you look then at Manchester United, and you say they've got both. These two clubs, and you'll say, well, the reason for that is it's because they're dominating English football right now, so they've got the pick of the choice. But it still beggars belief that Manchester United's only option, seemingly, is to go to a former player a great mm. player. It, of course he's in every conversation about the greatest player that ever lived. But we're talking about what people are suggesting, which is Rooney saying, and I'm, as a player, I would listen to Rooney. As a manager, I think probably you could resync the Titanic with the lack of information that he has. Oh, but, Simon, that's but, not fair. But Come is, on. No, I'm, you know, Come on, get your head like. He's learning his trade. Right? He's learning his trade. Right? And the fact of the matter is he can talk to Man United about a time when he, he was at Man United. He tells me you've got an agenda uh, no, against win, and that's just proof. I don't have an agenda against anyone. But the bottom line is, is that United now are seemingly in a position where they can't recruit the players that can deal with the here and now because Nunes will go into to Liverpool and he'll deal with the here and now. Diaz will go into Liverpool and deal with the here and now which gives you the short-term mentality that you like which is managers have got to deal with it now and the long-term position. So what do United do? Just accept the 37-year-old as their outcome? No, what you do, you accept the 37-year-old as being one of the best ever and you hope that his influence in the dressing room in terms of how they train, their attitude to the game, the way they live their lives rubs off on some of them because who name me someone else in that dressing room if you were a young man in that dressing room today you're looking up to and who are you going to learn from name me one other no I'm with you I, I, I am so a regular advocate there are, of surely there are if you Bruno Fernandes Varane well, these, these guys have well, been around the block well yeah but that doesn't mean that even doesn't, Christian Eriksen but that doesn't they're not leaders, I'm a fan Jim. of his I, I, I like him I, I, I don't see there being any real strong men in that dressing room that's going to help them and, and I re I've been in the dressing room with big players, so-called big players, that when it, when the going gets tough, they're not big players. By that, I mean they're no longer making that the extra angle to get on the ball when we're one nil down or lost a couple of games back to back. So they haven't got any real men, and that's the chat this weekend after one ninety minutes of football. People are talking about the club is too big for some players, and that can be the case. Man United are a team who are never off the front pages and the back pages, and the pressure of playing for Man United 
is enormous. And some people are not dealing with it very so well. So Ronaldo can take that pressure off a lot of the a lot of the, the weaker personalities in the dressing room. I mean, room. I'm just conscious of the fact you keep on saying has been one of the best, has been one of the best. Of course, he's not the same as he was 10 years ago, but he's still got a lot to offer. So come what's back, it, what's come back to his 18 Marko goals. Notovic, they're talking about Marko Arnautovic, an offer of 8.5 million euros, rejected by Bologna. Are United what? fans thinking, is that the 30, extent 33? Of, hmm. 33? Yeah. Well, you can't begin to talk about Arnautovic in the same breath as Ronaldo. I mean, I would describe him as dodgy when he was at when he was in West Ham before. You're looking at me thinking... What does dodgy mean? Do you mean lightweight? You, you can't rely on him. You can't trust him. You can't trust him. But isn't that, to some extent, the modern-day footballer? There's, there are a few exceptions that stand out, and that's why you go, yeah, bang, but, there's a leader. Simon, my experience of dressing rooms, it works like this. You, you need you need a catalyst. You need a really, you know, yeah. big call. Someone, yeah. someone, someone will take yeah. on out. It just yeah. looks for a fight. You need that person. Yeah. Okay, if there's and, Richard, who's a United fan. Graham, great to have you on board at Talk Sport, but you're pandering to Ronaldo. He's not about the team. He's all about himself. He's just proved I, it. I and somebody else has just said there, Graham, Graham Sunis in his day, if if Ronaldo had walked out in Sunis at halftime in a game, he would have dragged him around the training, training ground like a rag doll. And you would have. You see, I understand why I left at half time. He wasn't alone in leaving at half time. I understand why he gave him 45 minutes because f- you got to protect Ronaldo. Ronaldo wants to play every minute. You've touched on it, Sam. Mm-hmm. He wants to play in every minute of every game that he's involved in. At 37, he needs protecting. You don't, the last thing you want to get in pre season is a hamstring or a muscle injury that can keep you out four to eight weeks. That's the very last thing. So the manager's looking at him, not done the same training as everybody else. I'll give him 45 minutes. I'll introduce him slowly. That's why I gave him 45 minutes. That should have been explained to Ronaldo before the game started. I'm going to be 45 minutes because of that. Him going at half time, and I'm not this, I wouldn't be happy with it. I, I'll state that I would not be happy. But again, that should have been laid in black and white terms. Everyone stays to the end of the game. We are a team. We win, we lose, we drop. We are a team. They went at half-time, I assume, to avoid the traffic. Getting away from Old Trafford, as we all know, is, mm. is difficult because they get such big crowds. So that point should have been made to these players. He wasn't alone in leaving. Yeah, yeah. I just wonder what Manchester United fans think this morning, Sam. You get Frankie de Jong still over in Barcelona saying, no, nah, I don't... I- don't particularly mm. want to go there. I want to stay at Barcelona. Yeah, and love play, Port- he'll be playing a game, Jim. He, he's and he's trying Port- to get his tosh out of Barca. He's going to make those noises. We what, do you think he'll end up at United? I think it's a real chance. I think um, Simon knows the intricacies of, of deals as well as I do. De Jong will be saying, I am not leaving here unless I get weighed in for every single penny I'm due. Whether Barcelona give it to me, or a Man United put extra on the transfer fee and I get it that way, I want my money. You always say it's all about money, Simon. It probably is all about money. Well, in this instance, there's an, an inherent fairness on this because the players deferred a salary. If it was about sign-ons and bonuses and loyalty payments and someone's put a transfer request, and you have that argument. I can't square the circle where Barcelona want to do with this because you've now got Laporta coming out saying they don't want to sell him. They want to retain him on a longer-term contract. They want him to reduce his wages and fit more into the pay structure. I get the impression from talking to people in Catalonia that the player doesn't particularly want to leave Barcelona so how do you then get into a situation where United are running around trying to induce beyond a reasonable level of conversation? It's one thing selling something to them. It's another thing putting a shepherd's crook around their neck and dragging them <laughs> to Manchester. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you see, you, you've just answered it there. It's, it's, you play the game. So you've got the player saying he, he doesn't want to leave and you've got Laporta saying we don't want to sell him. So they're playing the game. You know, he wants his money. He wants out of there. He and, wants his money, and that's fair enough. But the, but but if it's but, deferred wages, Barcelona, he's due to it. and that's right. And I agree it. with that in this instance. But seventy odd million quid for the player is what Barcelona want because Barcelona have done all their restructuring, refinancing. They've sold some of their media rights, brought forward the income forward to get past the problems they've created for themselves of overpaying and the problems of COVID nineteen and all the loss of revenue they got. New associates not paying any money, but here they are now singing a different song, and you think it's playing the game, but they've done the deal with United. 75 million quid. Which would you rather have? An argument about 17 million quid or an argument about 75 million quid? I know which one yeah, I'd rather have. Yeah, but the player, the player doesn't care where the money comes from. He no, but want if you're Barca and you're sat there and the jeopardy is we, we, we argue about 70 million quid and we win that battle, but we lose a 75 million pound argument. Makes would, no sense. I would say there's still time for that to happen. Yeah. I, I that agree. might be one of them it goes to the wire Simon yet a new season for Manchester United it began with familiar protests outside the stadium against the Glazers I saw uh, Avram Glazer I think it was was there I mean these continuous demonstrations do they somewhat lose their impact after a while? Um, uh, yeah I think so like anything it's like anything uh, you know if you if you, if you you overexpose people to something they become anaesthetised to it but I'm not entirely sure what they want to achieve I know they're unhappy 
we know the reasons why they're unhappy. But this narrative that they're going to find some sort of saviour that's going to ride in on some white horse that's going to be a unicorn that's just going to give Man United a big bag of money and give the fans what they want is for the birds. If they're going to be, if Chelsea have gone for two and a half billion quid, United are, with due respect to the achievements, a infinitely bigger club than Chelsea. They own their own stadium. Chelsea don't even own their own stadium. The pitch holders do. They've got twice the capacity. The worldwide brand reaches far more people. So if, if Chelsea have gone for two and a half billion, United are going to go for five. Where's this queue of people that want to come listening to a bunch of whining United fans about how unhappy they are the first time something doesn't go their way? Mm. So then you look at it and say, and then the next guy comes in and buys it. What do you think Todd Bowley's bought Chelsea for? For goodwill. There's two and a half billion quid gone in there, private equity money. They're going to want to return on it. It's debt in a different guise. But what you've got is these guys have not put best in class in there for nine years. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. They've not put best in class in there. Right. If you're a United fan, you took part in the protests outside the stadium yesterday. Why do you do it? These continuous demonstrations, don't they lose their impact after a while? Shouldn't you focus more on the team, whoever's starting uh, a match for you uh, for Manchester United these days? Give us a call if you fancy it. Graeme Souness is with Simon and myself. 03717 8189. Jim White. Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport